Hello everyone, Helen here. Well, welcome along today. Whether you're new, a very big welcome if you're new, or if you're one of my lovely regular viewers uh, who's been coming back lots and lots of times. And today uh, I am mostly chatting about the book that I have been obsessed with for the last nine months, uh, Mush and Friends by the French designer Cynthia Valle. And just in case you're new and you haven't come across this book, it's a book of knitted animal characters, but they're all knitted without seams. And I'm going to be sort of giving a, a an overview of my experiences with using that book today. That's the main thing I'm going to be showing you. And I have just uh, recently finished the very last animal in the book and that means it's the first time I've ever knitted uh, an entire book of patterns, uh, which is which is quite a record. Certainly for me, I've never done that before. And um, yeah, so so that, well, that just tells you how much I have loved the book. Uh, so the very last animal I haven't actually introduced you to her properly, and that is Fiona. She's called. She's not called that in the in the book. She's called Billy, and she's a raccoon. And uh, yeah, so there she is, all complete with her clothes. I knitted her from Shetland Spindrift because I just like the slightly rougher feel for some of the animals for using that. It's not one I usually use, but it seems just right for the raccoon. And her dress is just knitted from a little, a couple of leftover mini skeins of four ply yarn. And she just seemed to. She seemed to be asking for a bit of pink in her clothes <laughs> and I can't remember where they come they came from so they, they in the book she's not wearing a dress she's wearing a jumper and culottes so I decided that she actually would like to have a dress so I just knitted the jumper which was top down and then I just continued down to make make it into a dress so uh, I haven't quite allowed that if you if you make the trousers which are in the book it has a hole for the tail to go through, so the uh, <laughs> the dress does come up a little bit when she moves her tail, but uh, her fine tail. Uh, but otherwise, so that that's fine, and then there was no real problem with knitting this one. I would say this is probably one of the easier ones to knit, um, and. Uh, yeah, there was just a bit of colour changing in the head that made it slightly more tricky than a one coloured animal. But uh, otherwise, otherwise it was it was a lovely little pattern. And so she joins the the rest of the Motion Friends family. Uh, and so I decided I needed to go on a photo shoot. And as I had my nieces staying in half term, in their half term holiday, uh, then I thought that was the perfect time to go for a photo shoot. So they came along with me and we had such a lovely sunny afternoon out in the woods deciding where to set up the all of the animals and uh, oh, there were individual shots as well. So, so I'm going to show you a little video now of our photo shoot in the woods of Mush and Friends.
So we really did have such a lovely time. And uh, yeah, so, so finishing the book really set me thinking about how much I had gained from, you know, just just being um, completely obsessed with that book. And not just what I'd gained, though, I think other people gained something as well. So I put together a few thoughts and I thought you might like to see photos of all of the animals and and just hear me chat a bit about. Uh, what, I, what I thought about Motion Friends. Before the Motion Friends book was published in April 2023, I'd knitted five of Cynthia Valle's patterns. Sadie Suri, the mouse, Tutu Bear, and I actually made four of them, Myrtle Bear, who's a larger bear, Jodie Turtle and Dee Dee Molly, who's the smaller of two mole patterns. Not all of these animals still live with me. Some were gifted. I fell in love with these patterns from the word go. It was a revelation to me that animals could be knitted in one piece and require no seaming. Though I'd made some animals previously that were knitted in the round, such as Susan B. Anderson's toy patterns although some of those do sometimes require certain body parts to be stitched together. I do now find it a bit more of a chore uh, than I used to if I knit a toy that's got many parts to sew together before I can meet my new knitted friend properly. Though, of course, I will continue to make this kind of pattern because there are so many lovely ones out there, such as the Little Cotton Rabbits patterns. Being already familiar with Cynthia's animal patterns gave me a bit of a head start when the Mushin Friends book came along. I was already familiar with some of the techniques. However, the book just added extra levels of enjoyment to the pleasure I'd already had with the first animals that I'd made. And today I want to share with you some of the many beneficial effects of becoming totally enveloped by the Motion Friends knitting experience. Knitting these animals has made me feel more than ever as though I've worked some kind of magic. I've turned photos in a book into three-dimensional beings that I can hold and have sit next to me. I've learned that these characterful animals can quickly put a smile onto my face and onto the faces of pretty much everyone who sees them. They seem to be a means of spreading happiness and cheer in a world that isn't always the happiest of places. I can't thank Cynthia Valle enough for bringing these charming characters into the world. They've allowed me, probably more than any other toys that I've made, to be playful. They've stimulated my imagination and allowed me to connect with my inner child, which is a secure and happy place to spend time. I was definitely feeling playful and childlike when I decided that the two pigs, Matthew and Rose, should get married at Gretna Green, followed by their honeymoon on a remote Scottish island. <laughs> The animals have sparked ideas for stories and have already inspired me to write a story poem about Wolfie and the missing button, which reminds me I must finish taking photos of the story scene so that I can add illustrations to the story. Because these patterns begin with the animal's head, as soon as the eyes have been put into place, I've started to feel a bond with the animal and that's encouraged me to keep knitting and get it finished. Having such beautiful clothes patterns to knit as well has also spurred me on to get the animals finished because I absolutely love making clothes for toys and dressing them up. Motion Friends has enabled me to make connections with like-minded toy makers or simply lovers of handmade toys around the world. I had great fun taking part in the Moosh and All the Friends knit-along that ran for several months last year and it was so good to connect with other enthusiastic knitters of the seamless animals. There have been some special moments too when Cynthia, the designer herself, has left kind comments on photos of the animals that I've posted on Instagram. And it's just been a great pleasure to read so many comments from other lovely people on Instagram and YouTube and know that I'm playing a little part in spreading some happiness. In the process of making the animals, I've learnt lots of new techniques and stitch patterns, some more challenging than others, and using these techniques or stitch patterns on a small scale rather than in much larger items 
has made the learning experience much more accessible and less daunting. All of these challenges have been successfully completed by me due largely to the well-written instructions that Cynthia provides in the book. I've enjoyed these challenges, having my hand firmly held by Cynthia all the way through, and it's definitely boosted my self-esteem and confidence as a knitter. And I think it's had a beneficial effect on my courage to try new things, as well as developing perseverance and patience. Making these toys has encouraged me to slow right down and be much more mindful of the gentle action of the knitting needles and the appreciation of the different beautiful yarns that I've used. All in all, this book has lifted my spirits in a way that no other knitting book has ever done before. And it's not surprising that I felt motivated to keep making the characters until I'd made every single one. I'll just finish off with three tips that might help you if you're having a go or hoping to have a go at knitting these beautiful characters. So firstly, if you haven't knitted anything in the round before, whether that's on double pointed needles or on a circular, you could practice by learning to knit socks first or trying some of Susan B. Anderson's toy patterns. I don't think it's necessary to read all of the introductory lessons in the book before you begin. You might feel a bit overwhelmed if you do, but do read them when Cynthia tells you to look at a particular lesson in the course of making whichever animal you're working on. And finally, knit at moments when you're not feeling pressed for time. Just proceed as slowly as you like and don't put yourself under any pressure to rush the making process. I, I do think that go slowly is probably my top tip. And if you are ever having a go at knitting any of the Motion Friends and you have any questions that I might be able to help you with, don't please get in touch. Um, I'll be happy to at least try and help. <laughs> but um, I know lots of you who don't even knit or don't knit toys have just enjoyed seeing all of this family grow. <laughs> it's been wonderful. So I and I did have a lovely time with with my nieces the rest of the time. Um, we kept ourselves quite quite busy, as usual, making things. And uh, I'm going to finish off today with uh, with a little video just of, of two or three of the things that we did while they were the, while they were here. There was also some music practice going on uh, from Nell. Nell plays the piano. I actually teach her the piano and as she lives in Scotland it's they're normally online lessons but uh, it was lovely because recently she decided that she wanted to learn the music which is which I use as the theme tune to my Mousy Makes podcasts so I uh, just videoed a, a little bit of her playing. So that's really lovely. She's just started learning that and I think she's doing pretty well. And she also plays the bagpipes and she didn't bring the bagpipes with her. <laughs> Where she lives, she lives in uh, quite an, a remote location so she can go and practice her bagpipes out in the garden <laughs> and not really disturb anybody. Uh, but but here, yeah, she didn't bring her bagpipes, but she did bring her chanter, uh, which, which doesn't make such a nice sound as bagpipes outdoors really but it's a way of practicing of just blowing and practicing all the fingering and so she, she's doing amazingly well she has learned so many tunes in a short space of time here's just a little snippet yeah so <laughs> Her sister doesn't really like the sound of it, but um, she she wasn't anywhere around when uh, Nell was busy practicing. And as I say, Nell normally does go outside in the garden at home to do her practice there. <coughs> so that's very funny. Anyway, anyway, let's let's just finish off with a little video of of the girls busy, uh, me a bit busy as well sometimes, and uh, and then I'll pop in to say goodbye to you at the end.
Well, I do hope you've enjoyed today's podcast. And if you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, a like. And if you'd like to, you can leave a comment as well. It's always lovely to to read what you have to say. And, um, and I love to reply as well. So uh, until I see you again, though, take great care of yourself and keep nice and busy. And I will be back again very soon. Okay, then. Bye.